Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, college football fans across the nation and around the world. This is Tim May with the Tim May Podcast. Wait a minute, do you hear that? That's the clock ticking. <laughs> By the time you're watching this, you're a month away from the grand opening of the 2022 Ohio State football season. And what a grand opening it'll be. Ohio State versus Notre Dame in the shoe, prime time. And, you know, as we head into preseason camp coverage and all kinds of other things on LettermanRoad.com and on my podcast, I thought it'd be great to catch up with uh, an active Buckeye just one more time before camp starts. And uh, I've liked this guy since I first met him. I think he's poised to really ascend to the heights this year in this new Jim Knowles defense. Uh, his name is Jack Sawyer, defensive end from Pickerington. But more than that, uh, he's in his second year with the Buckeyes. And uh, all things uh, coming out of uh, spring ball and then and then through the summer says this guy has really uh, turned it on. He and JT Tui Molowal. I mean, the depth of that defensive end position last year was a little bit of a, I don't know, a disappointment from the standpoint of uh, – consistent pressure, et cetera, they put on quarterbacks and definitely in the realm of sacks. But uh, there is a definite vibe this year uh, going into this season. And like I said, under the new direction of defensive coordinator Jim Knowles, that this defense is going, going to be quite dynamic, very aggressive, so much so I wrote a story about it for this week with uh, Ryan Day and quoting some some players too. But with Ryan Day, I, I pointed out, you know, if he could be a – if he was a defensive coordinator, this is the defense he probably would run because he really liked what he saw from his new hire, Jim Knowles, through the spring, the way the defense took to it with new with the other <clears throat> two new coaches, Tim Walton, of course, and Perry Eliano, joining a longtime veteran, considered maybe the, uh, the GOAT of defensive line coaches, definitely maybe among the elite at this moment, uh, Larry Johnson. But uh, – he really liked – Brian Day really liked the dynamics that he saw through the spring, and he also liked the, the esprit de corps he saw among the defenders. Uh, they feel like they're on to something big, whereas this time a year ago there were a lot of doubts, and then those doubts uh, came to fruition, and it led Ryan Day to make basically the biggest purge of his young head coaching career on the defensive side of the ball. But, you know, I wanted uh, Jack Sawyer on for a couple of reasons, number one of which is as we begin our conversation, you'll hear me asking him about name, image, and likeness, only because, you know, before he enrolled at Ohio, before he started at Ohio State, uh, uh, he was already planning uh, on how those kind of things would go because anybody could see that coming around the corner, the name, image, and likeness rights. And he's taking advantage of it like so many of the Buckeyes have here over the last year. You know, and uh, we we discuss that to begin this conversation, but then we get into the football aspects, and I think you'll enjoy that conversation also. To say uh, to say he's uh, he's fired up about what's coming uh, in this com what's coming this season from a defensive from the defensive side of the ball with the Buckeyes would be putting it mildly. He is definitely fired up about this Jim Knowles defense. So without any further ado, uh, let's get to my conversation with Jack Sawyer. And as promised, ladies and gentlemen, an encore performance uh, by one of my favorite guests I've had on this podcast over the last several years. His name is Jack Sawyer. You may have heard of him. He's a defensive end for the Ohio State University. Uh, he and JT Tui Molowau are, are ready to step up their game this year, obviously along with that de that really deep uh, deep depth chart. I guess that's kind of redundant, isn't it, Jack? But uh, that deep depth chart okay. and defensive end for the Buckeyes. But, hey, Jack, welcome back to the Tim May Podcast. I appreciate it. Glad I to be back. To, I wanted to catch up with you, man. After uh, you know, the last time we talked, it was before you entered Ohio State, and you were already you had already been doing your homework about name, image, and likeness, and the the benefits you guys were going to reap from stuff that was going to be coming down the road. And uh, I'm just wondering, how's that gone for you, man? Uh, it's going well. You know, it's going well. You know, you know, my main one right now is uh, you know, I got a nice truck from uh, you know, Rick over there, at Rick Reichert Automotive. So. Uh, you know, loving it, and you know, I love those guys over there, and it's you know, it's going well. Ex explain to people. You know, I had uh, I had Brian Schottenstein and then Zach Beebe uh, on my podcast last week. Zach Beebe from NIL Management, uh, two interesting guys who put together that uh, the foundation uh, Brian Schottenstein has with his with his friends, and you know, really 
really going out of their way to help you guys, <laughs> help you guys. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, uh, just for example, give people an idea when you have a, a name, image, and likeness deal, for example, with, with Rikert Automotive, what's your responsibility to them besides getting to drive their truck around? Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, as the, as the law state with NILs, you got to do something to return. And so, you know, we do a bunch of cool things over there with, uh, you know, Rikert Automotive. We got the commercials, uh, so we go, we shoot some commercials and then uh, every once in a while I just got to post about the truck. So, uh, you know, that's kind of, that kind of sums up, you know, the general of uh, what you got to do in return for, you know, you're getting the NIL benefit. Yeah. And of course you guys, you guys get to take part of it. Like you and I were talking about before we started here, you, you know, you get to, you get to take part, part in some autograph sessions now, et cetera. And because obviously y'all draw a crowd, that's what name, image, and likeness is all about. And you get remunerated for it. If in fact, that's the correct uh, way to use that verb. But, uh, you know, like two two years ago, that wouldn't have been legal and stuff. So do you feel like, you know, finally things have come come around the right way for college athletes, uh, especially big time college football and basketball players? Oh, I mean, definitely. You know, think about the stuff we do, you know, every day during the week and, you know, throughout the whole year, even out of season, you know, it's crazy the amount of work we put in and, you know, we're, we're not taking any money out of the university's hands. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so. Wait a you know, minute. It's funny, how, funny how they worked that out, isn't it? Yeah, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. You knew that. You know, we weren't going to get any money from the university for that, which, you know, it plays out nice that we're not. So, yeah. you know, we get a chance to get out there and make some money for ourselves. Like, you just, it's just crazy. You think back, like players like Braxton Miller and Cardale when he went on his three game run. And, oh. Some of those players who never really saw the benefits, you know, in the professional, you know, Braxton played on a few teams here, there, instead of Cardell. But I mean, they, these guys would probably be making seven figures a year uh, being in college if they were around during NIL. So, you know, I think it's a great, I think it's a great thing for kids to be able to, you know, make some money while they're in college. You never know what can happen to the pros with, you know, injuries and stuff like that. And maybe not pan out the way you thought you were going to. So, you know, I think it's a great opportunity. And, uh, you know, I just, I think it's really great for us. Yeah. You know, as as I've said many times, people listen to me, you know, the few people that actually listen to me, one of those is not my wife, but uh, the people who actually <laughs> listen to me, I've always said, you know, I covered three sports. I've covered three major sports, especially when I was newspapers. It was auto racing, football, and boxing, two where they wore a helmet and one where they should. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no, they, should, they shouldn't wear a helmet, man. Come on, you're boxing. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you know what I, you, I, I don't know how much you boxed, but uh, that's a that's a podcast for another day. But uh, right. but the bottom line is, every time you every time you strap on the helmet in football and auto racing, you're putting yourself in jeopardy. You know, right. and uh, it, you you agree with that too, right? I mean, uh, I mean, you're not you're not dumb. You understand what the what the jeopardy is out there, right? Oh, I mean, definitely. You know, football. I mean, we're you know. 270 pounds, 330 pounds going at each other every play. I mean, it's a car wreck line of scrimmage every play. You know, yeah. that's how your body that's how your body feels after practice. You've been in a couple of car wrecks. So I mean, you know, the the game of football, you know, I think I heard a quote one time, uh they they called the NFL why they call it the NFL is because it's not for long. Yeah. So you can't you can't play football your whole life, but you, you can play golf your whole life, you know. So uh, you know, I mean football, you strap on that helmet with those shoulder pads and it's on, you know, it's a war out there. So yeah. And the other thing is like an injury can end it all or someone can just tell you, Jack, we don't need you anymore. You know what I mean? I mean, it can be over right. like that one way or the other. Right. Uh, yep. whimsically, whimsically, whimsically almost. Uh, that's easy for me to say. But uh, but yeah, you know, but, you know, best is, though, how do you think how do you think you guys I mean, you know, Ohio State's gotten a lot of praise uh, for one of another term for how it is allowed you guys or not allowed. I mean, but how think the NIL uh, waterfront has been handled by Ohio State uh, and uh, the the opportunities you guys have gotten. Do you feel like y'all have been in that turn in that regard blessed by over the last year or so about the deals that have come up uh, for you guys? Oh, I mean, definitely. They're you know, playing for the most historic college football team, football program, you know, in the world. Uh, you know, I mean, the opportunities are endless for us, you know, locally nationally you know we get we get a lot of attention you know as we should being one of the best programs in the country you know throughout time and then uh, I just want to say how well like we've been taught about it too is we always have a bunch of meetings you know about paying taxes uh you know making sure we're, we're submitting our uh, NIL deals you know to be reviewed and stuff like that so uh you know we're just doing all the steps right too and uh you know we have a bunch of a bunch of opportunities too and uh I think it's just great you know Ohio State's the best place to be for it I believe yeah 
I was going to say, you know, Ryan Day, we've talked to him a bunch of times, including uh, this this past week over in Indianapolis at the Big Ten Media Days. And, you know, basically his point is, you know, yeah, probably if you had your dream scenario, you'd go back to the good old days, you know, but the good old days are gone forever. And yep. the thing is, you can you can sit there and gripe about the way things are going or you can embrace them mm-hmm. and in essence, you know, utilize them to enhance your attractiveness to uh, recruits, to, to, to transfer portal dudes, uh, and, yeah. you know, et cetera. And even to the, the guys on your team. Right. And it looks like, and I'm not just saying this man be paying it looks like Ohio state has done that. Right. Oh, no, definitely. I mean, you know, you know, I'm not sure whether or not, you know, coach day and uh, love the idea at first or not, you know, a lot of coaches across the country, you know, you see different opinions here and there, but what I do know is he's embraced it once it got passed and, you know, he's really helped us make sure we know, you know, the right deals, the wrong deals, you know, how to submit things and, you know, how to just kind of be a professional. And I think that's another great point, uh, too, is, you know, this is kind of giving us a, giving us a, an early, an early teaching almost of how to, how to handle your money when you're making money and how to be a professional, keep your business first, which is football. So if you're not playing well on the field, you're not going to get paid off the field. And that's the same way in the NFL too. And so, you know, when guys like Trey Henderson burst on the scene last year and, you know, Rightfully so. He got, you know, he's been getting paid too. So uh, it's it's just, you know, it's teaching him and other guys, you know, on the team and across the country how to be professional so early. And I give a lot of props to Coach Day for, you know, giving us the right resources to teach us the right things and, you know, help us learn stuff that we should know earlier rather than later on that type of stuff as well. Hey, by the way, who represents you? I mean, I'm, you got to have some kind of representative or you just do it yourself. Yeah, you know, I just, I actually, you know, about a month and a half ago, I signed with Athletes First. So with them, yeah. but, but the point is, it's like, you don't want to get into hookups now that I would think that's the minefield. You don't want to get into hookups now that could be a dra- drag on you three, four or five years from now. Right. I mean, you've got to be careful right. here. Right. Cause I would yeah. think there are some unscrupulous characters running around. Oh, I mean, definitely. You know, there's guys, you know, there's definitely guys out there trying to get their hands in people's pockets, you know, get, a, get a couple of dollars here and there if they can. And, yeah, you know, that's another. You know, that's another thing we talk about. We talk about you know the right being with the right people, and it's another thing Coach Day and our staff does a great job with is you know trying to you know tell us about there's right people that's going to actually try to help you, you know, benefit you, and there's people that are going to try to benefit off of you. And so you know it's kind of like a it's a two way it's a two way street when it comes to that. Yeah. Hey, well, let's get into something else too, man. I mean, football camp's about to start. As a, as a guy who obviously you skipped your senior year or because of COVID stuff going on at Pickerington, you skipped your, your, your last season. And, you know, and you, when you and I were talking in that podcast uh, that year, it was like, you thought, Hey, there was a chance if the big 10 played in the, in the winter, like they were talking about, you were going to get to play. Right. And then, of course they scotched that idea and they played in the fall anyway and stuff. But uh, uh, what I'm getting to here is other than that though, you've been, you've been going through preseason camps for a while at this moment in the, in the calendar, do you look forward to what's what's about to come over the next month, or is it get through it? I, explain to people what your mindset is. I mean, my mindset right now is, you know, coming out of spring, you know, I feel like I had a, one of the best springs I could possibly have had. Yeah. And, uh, you know, right now my mindset is just going on attacking, attacking camp because, you know, I know as soon as we got camp, you know, Notre Dame is only a couple of weeks out. So, yeah. uh, you know, I just want to just get as, as much better as I can through camp and try to dominate camp and, you know, not let camp dominate me. You know, when you get in that hotel for a couple of weeks, it could be it could be draining for people. And uh, you know, so I'm just going in there with a positive mindset. You know, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. So that's that's my mindset right now. Hey, do y'all have rules too? I mean, like in camp, do you do you have rules that like, you know, maybe put the NIL NIL type stuff to the side for a while? I mean, what what in this modern era? Because uh no one's really experienced this until like last year and stuff, but it, do y'all have any kind of rules in that regard? Maybe even just among yourselves, but go ahead. Uh, you know, I don't. I haven't really heard too much about the rules, but uh, about pertain, pertaining to stuff like that. But you know, going into camp, you know, moving to a hotel, you know, it's strictly business. Yeah. You know, those, those two weeks are it's a business trip, and so well, I think everybody knows that, and everybody, everybody's kind of going to stick to that. So I don't really think too much has to be said because those two weeks should be all focused on football, anyways. Give 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 people some insight though. I've never been in a football preseason camp. Y'all practice once a day. I think you get at least one day off a week, right? From a the practice yeah. grind. Uh, but what do you do the rest of the day? You know, you know, back when I first started watching 
known about football when I was a little bitty kid way back in the other century. Uh, and then, uh, but then, you know, the last, when I first started covering football, I mean, heck, when John Cooper was there, they had three a days during preseason right. camp. Uh, right. You guys have one a day, and everybody talks about how tough it is. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. But 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 the point is, it can anything could be tough. But but after you after a practice, what what do y'all do? Because I think y'all try to work out in the mornings, right? I mean, but then what do you yeah. do? You just meet and lift and yeah, what so, give mean, people so honestly, an idea. You know, you know like you know, the, the practice of the day isn't really the tough part. You know, the tough part is being locked in the rest of the day during yeah. meetings. You know, making sure you're, you're staying awake and staying a pen, attention to uh, the film when you're watching it later in the day and making sure you're taking care of your body, making sure you're recovering, making sure you're eating right, drinking right, uh, drinking enough water and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, the practice once a day isn't the hard part, really, what people think is. But, uh, you know, it can wear on you, you know, if you're not taking care of the other stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like golf. Golf doesn't look very hard, but, man, I, I got to go to the U.S. Open this year, you know, and uh, you're watching those guys, and they're grinding for four days. Their head yeah. is just all into it. You, you, unless you've been on at that level, you know, and I've never been on that level, but I can, I can understand it. Your concentration's got to be there, right? I mean, uh, it's got to. you it's don't want to be – yeah, don't want to be sleepwalking through these meetings, especially with Coach Johnson. He might actually say a cuss word, but I've never heard <laughs> him say one. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt he'd say it. Hey, how exciting are you? Yeah. How excited are you though, Jack? Because you we talked to you in the spring and stuff and uh about this new defense. I mean, obviously you could have a, a really interesting role in this with the Leo. We'll talk to you down the road about that, you know, during camp and stuff. But uh just I, I've been telling people since the second half of the Rose Bowl on, and you talked about this during the spring, and I kind of goaded you along on that too. I mean you guys have had a different attitude about yourselves, haven't you? I mean, oh yeah. I mean, look. Explain. I mean, talk about defensively. Explain to people what what kind of happened there and and why it is so. You know, that's why it was so frustrating last year, is because we got we're we're so talented on the defensive side of the ball. There's no reason why we shouldn't be a top five, top ten defense in the country. And uh, you know, that's why you know the whole year, you know, you guys, even I mean, but mainly it was us. You know, we were beating ourselves up like, man, how are we giving up so many damn points to these guys when we got the best some of the best players in the country on the defense side of the ball. And, uh, you know, the defense we're playing now, man, we're, we're going after guys. And, uh, you know, yeah. we're playing offense on defense. I think that's the key. You know, I think last year we're kind of letting the offense dictate what we did on defense, and you can't play like that. Yeah. And so I think I think the best way to play football is going right at your opponent. Yeah. And so uh, why not do that on the defensive, defensive side of the ball? So I think that's what we're doing. You know, we've been doing it. And, uh, you know, I look forward to, you know, putting it in, putting it in practice in fall camp and then, you know, landing on Notre Dame too. So yeah, exactly. I mean, it's okay. I mean, that's you know, that's that's not those aren't uh, those aren't bullet. That's not bulletin board material. I mean, they got to expect that you're trying to get beat them, right? You know, right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, that's that's their intent, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. They, they should be thinking the same thing. So. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sure they are. Well, they you know their head coach has been saying some things. It's pretty been pretty interesting, you know. But uh, and he's a Ohio yeah. State alum. You know, it's interesting though, Coach Day. Over, you know, we were talking to him over in Indianapolis, and I even asked him about that. When he watched you guys defensively in the spring, was he seeing what he wanted to see? Because you know what I mean by that. Ryan Day right. is an aggressive offensive play caller, right? Right. Best in and, the country. And it's got, it had to drive him crazy, and this is casting no aspersions, to kind of watch the way his defense went about business last year especially, because that wasn't what he wanted. He knew the talent that was on hand there, but it wasn't – getting pointed in the right direction, that's not casting aspersions. It's pretty obvious he changed three out of the four defensive coaches, you know? <laughs> right, so, yeah. Uh, well, Jim Knowles, what what just jumps out at you about Jim Knowles and his approach? Like, we just talked about the aggressive part of it, but you're one of those guys he likes. Like, uh, we were talking to him during the spring, and I, I brought up, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Caden, Caden Curry and sort of his nasty nature when he's on the field, and he brought you up, too, that surliness about you guys. Y'all are – yeah. Pretty good, pretty good, easy go lucky looking kind of guys off the field, but on the field you want to get after people, right? Oh man, most definitely. You know, when you when you step on the football field, your mentality's got to flip, and your whole personality's got to change. And so, you know, what stood out to, to me about Coach Knowles is, you know, how aggressive he wants to play, and you know how serious he takes it too. You know, yeah. how serious he takes the scheming, and how serious he takes practice and meetings and everything else before you get on the field. I think that's really key as well. And, uh, you know, like you said, you know, when you get on the field, you got to be a different person. You got to be a different yeah. animal. You got to become a beast. So 
Yeah. Jack Beast. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> uh, do you like the Leo? If in fact you get to play that some, do you like the Leo? Do you like where that's going? I mean, can you see yourself making a pick six out in the flat? Oh, I mean, definitely. You know, I only have one pick six in my life. And I was a freshman when I had it. And uh, I was playing. I think I might have been playing outside linebacker that play. But, yeah. you know, I love it. You know, uh, I can't – I don't really want to say too much about that yeah. position. You know, give some stuff away. But, you know, uh, I like my versatility. I think, uh, you know, playing basketball growing up really gave me, you know, some wiggle to me and being able to move around and stuff like that. And, you know, playing different positions in high school. So, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just ready to show my athleticism and show my versatility. Dude, you know about how about good how good that made me feel about you talking about the wiggle because I started saying that about Travion Henderson last year and people kept looking at me funny and all of a sudden I hear coaches using that word. You know, I mean, yep. I think I have a way of Johnny Apple seeding words occasionally. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just throwing them out yeah. there and, and suddenly and they're looking at you like they invented it. You know what I mean? But uh, right, yeah. Well, that's what sets all you guys apart, Jack. I don't want to keep you much longer, but I that you know that's what bothered bothered me watching y'all y'all on defense last year is I know there's some pretty damn good athletes out there who seemed at times sort of hamstrung. You know what I mean? And it, and it, yeah. and you can be hamstrung just because maybe you're overloaded from a tactical standpoint or strategic standpoint, or you know, you're hamstrung as in uh maybe things weren't as clear to you guys from a scheme standpoint as they should have been. Uh, what what do you think has gotten cleared up more than anything else over the last eight months? Uh, you know, like you said, you know, uh, that, that was one of the big things for us early guys on the defense is figuring out the defense. You know, last year we had a lot of stuff installed that we never really even used. And, uh, you know, so we were always kind of out there thinking a little bit. And yeah. What's really changed is, you know, this this year with our scheme, you know, there's no thinking. You know, you're going to play fast. You know, you're going to yeah. make a mistake. Make, make it 100 mile an hour. So that's going to be all right. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, that's really what's changed the most, I'd say. Yeah, dictatorship. Di yep. Run a dictatorship, yeah. And the other thing is, <laughs> you guys are benefiting, and Coach Knowles has said this, he's benefiting from the fact a lot of you guys got your feet wet in some really rainy situations, like, yeah, for one of another, some real floody situations last year. I mean, because there were so many of you guys playing for the first time, right? You, you can see the benefit of that already, right, the experience that was gained? Oh, I mean, definitely. You know, the only way you get better is, you know, make mistakes because then you can learn from it and get better from it. So I think, you know, us getting, you know, like me and JT and Ty Lee, being able to get our feet wet a little bit last year in, in games and you know, to make mistakes, not play the best we could because, you know, we're out there thinking a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, th I think it was big for us, you know, because we, we hate seeing that on film. Cause huh. We know that's not, that's not what we're capable of doing. And so, you know, we, we were able to fix that in the spring. And, you know, you kind of just saw a different level of play from all of us, even older guys as well. So, yeah, I, you know, I think I think it was pivotal. Does the game stick in your crawl still? I mean, no, what happened up there? Does does it stick in your crawl? Meaning, I you know what I mean? It, but every, every day, yeah, we're remind, we're reminded of it every day as we should. Yeah, you know, we went up there. We went up there and got our asses kicked. So there's not much else to say about it. Bingo. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a, either a motivator or it's a uh, whatever cultivator. I mean, you get you get turned over and bring somebody else in. Uh, uh, Zach Harrison seems to have stepped up in the spring and stuff. Do you sense that too about those older guys kind of getting it? You know what I mean? I mean, enjoying what what's coming. Yeah, you know, definitely. I think we all took it day by day and, you know, really enjoyed, you know, coming to practice and coming to work, so to speak. And so, uh, you know, I think when you, when you get a bunch of a group of guys and that really buy in and really start enjoying spending time with each other and enjoying the grind, you know, it kind of brings a different level of, you know, a level of play idea that you you won't see if it's not the if it's not that way. So yeah, I think you know the older guys, you know, did a great job of that in the spring. I think us young guys did a great job of that too. We kind of all came together as a as a true team, and uh, you know, I think through through how hard our workouts have been this summer, we've got so much closer. You know, because we're we're there grinding with our brothers every day, and they're going through the same thing. So uh, you know, it, it's definitely made us all closer, made us more of a team. I'd say. Yeah, and I tell you what, man. I mean, I've been covering football for a long time. There's nothing I like better than watching a, an aggressive offense and an aggressive defense because it just it's just a total different game. You know, when when you see guys out there using what they are God's gifts, but in a concerted manner, it's really cool to watch. Maybe that's a little too uh, I don't know too esoteric for some people, but I 
I just didn't, I, I like it when you're seeing talent exploited. And that's the sense I've got of this because everybody keeps asking me, am I getting too fired up about this Jim Knowles defense? You know, and yeah, it is the Jim Knowles defense. That's, that's why Ryan Day brought him in. But I don't think I am, am I? No, I don't think you are. I think everybody should be excited. You know, like you said, you know, it, it brings joy when you see people's talents being able to be shown, you know. So, uh, you know, when you look around the field, you see guys flying around making plays and then having fun with each other after, you know, celebrating, jumping around, getting excited, you know, getting excited on the side of the ball. We didn't really see so much emotion last year. And I think when you got a bunch of group of guys running around like crazed dogs, you know, high-fiving and jumping up and down after making a play with each other, you know, I think it kind of it kind of intimidates the opposition a little bit too when a bunch of a group of guys is are one on the field. And so uh, you know, I think we all should be excited about what's coming this year. Yeah, it reminds me of those mid nineteen seventies defenses at Ohio State, man. There were some great players yeah. just playing balls. And they, and they love they love to have fun with each other. They love to play with each other too. That's Ex a big thing. Exactly. Hey, last thing, uh uh who is a young man on the defense? I asked Ronnie Hickman about this the other day at uh at the uh, Big Ten Media Days, but I wanted to ask you, who is somebody, a young guy, and you don't have to be a defensive lineman, but he could be, that you think is going to open some eyes this year that people have paid little or no attention to, of course, besides yourself? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I really like Kai Stokes, man. Kai's one of those kids comes in and wor works so hard every day, always got a big smile on his face, and he's yeah. a hell of a player. And he's a hell of a player, too. Had a good spring game, was practicing well the whole year. Uh, I'd say Jordan Hancock, too. You know, one of those guys that just works real hard, always got a big smile on his face, uh, loves to play football. And so I think those two guys, those two guys are, uh, are two to look out for, for sure. Yeah. I mean, Ryan Hippen named, uh, named uh, Jordan Hancock. Tell me, he must have made a great impression in the spring. I mean, did the light bulb just came on big time? Yeah, you know, I think he – I think all of us, you know, our whole group started taking a little more serious and – uh you know, just just try to get better every day and enjoy being there and stuff like that. And yeah, you know, Jordan, Jordan really bought in. You know, he had a great spring. You know, he can he can run, he can he can cover. You know, I think I think Jordan's got all the tools to be one of the best corners in the country in a couple of years. So yeah, uh, whether that may be this year or not, you know, I don't know. But you know, I think Jordan's a great player already. Yeah, and Kai Stokes. I mean, oh my goodness, a spring game was just yeah. the uh, exclamation point, right? I mean, you know, it's funny. You know, you know this, Jack. Some guys can. Just can play, right? I mean, yep. uh, from the get-go, yeah. right? Is he yep. one of those dudes? I think he is. You know, I think some guys are just ball players. you know, yep. and you can throw all the other stuff out with measurements and testing. You know, some guys can just play ball. You know, I think Kai is definitely one of those guys. He, he can just play ball. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I love Kai. I've worked out with Kai a lot. You know, he's always got great energy to him, too, which I like. And, uh, man, he works his ass off, too. So, I'm really proud of him and, and how he's worked this offseason coming in as a freshman. Yeah, I call those kind of guys uh, last framers. Uh, I've told Josh Proctor he's a last framer because you watch any video of any play, and no matter where the play is on the field, he almost ends up in the in the video yep. at the end, right? I mean, right. if not at the beginning. But the, the, you, know, you, you can't really teach that. I know you can encourage it, but that's just a want to, right? Exactly, exactly. Running think, the ball, you just, you just have to want to do it. I think so. you're a last framer too, man. Now, don't take that the wrong way. I try, I try to be. I try to be. Hey, last thing. What, what's what do you what do you look forward to, or like the most about preseason camp? Is it is it the getting even closer to your teammates, or I would think that would rub you the wrong way after about a week. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but or is it? I mean, is there something about spring camp or spring preseason camp? Excuse me, that you enjoy. You know what I mean? I mean, what 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 is that one thing you enjoy about it? I'd say the competition, you know, the competition's high during, you know, preseason camp and always grinding against other guys, and, you know, trying to be the best version of yourself going against, you know, some of the best tackles in the country, the best, some of the best offensive linemen in the country, regardless of, you know, position on the line and, you know, being around your teammates and uh, really building a bond on the field. So that's what I'd say I like the best about preseason camp. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. And this man will be traveling. Well, he'll be traveling by bus from the, from the, uh, hotel to the workout place, right? I mean, once y'all move in, but otherwise yeah. you'll be traveling in that nice Ford pickup from uh, Rikert Autom Automotive. Jack Sawyer, man, I appreciate you joining me on the Tim May Podcast again. You know, anytime, Tim. Appreciate you, man.